I'm delighted to have Patrick Pacheco with me. He's with a company called U.S. Trust, and they got a neat uh, white paper out there that I thought was really important, uh, the owner's journey. And uh, it's talking about uh, really the uh, challenges facing baby boomers, challenges going on, you know, really in business in general. And I thought it had, uh, has uh, uh, a lot of uh, important how-to advice. Uh, they talk about how the baby boomer transition uh, out of the economy is a $10 trillion transition. In fact, I read a book with that title, uh, I think, about four or five years ago. And that's only moving at an even faster pace. And so, Patrick, I'm delighted we could talk about it. Tell us a little bit about what you do for U.S. Trust and, and a little bit about U.S. Trust. I know it's part of Bank of America, but other than that, I'm not that familiar with it. So U.S. Trust is a 200-year-old company that serves uh, higher net worth individuals in, in the realm of, of managing their financial lives, managing their financial lives, not just for themselves, but for their for future generations with the primary goal of preserving wealth, growing wealth when appropriate. But for, for most of our clients, it's often just preserving what they have built over their lifetimes. Yeah, very good, very good. So let me, uh, let me ask you about this paper. I, I, I'm assuming it's motivated by, by the fact that, you know, we always hear every single day about uh, another group of baby boomers retiring. You know, every single day, uh, untold numbers are, are turning 65. Um, and, uh, and so uh, I'm, when that's happening, not only are, are a lot of them retiring, but they're, they're getting out of their business entirely. They're moving on. And so what kind of numbers are you seeing as far as that? Well, if, if you think about it yeah, broadly, you have a very, very large uh, account, the kind of pig in the python. All that baby boomer generation coming to the end one way or another, which we all inevitably will. But uh, bring it to local level, there are 19,000 entrepreneurs in Houston. Mm. On a national level, two-thirds of entrepreneurs don't have a succession plan for their business. If we, if we bring that to Houston, you're talking about two-thirds of those 19,000 having a business that has no uh, plan as to what happens when I die, when I want to retire, when I become incapacitated. You know, no one's going to die, though, right? No business owner? It, I think it, they operate under that it, assumption. It, it's funny. People often will, will start a conversation with me that says, if I die... And I look at them and I say, when? When, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, th- I, would, be, I would guess, because I worked in the financial uh, industry uh, for a while, I would guess that uh, it's probably even more so than two-thirds for, for Houstonians because there's a little more of a laissez-faire, a little more too busy doing living now attitude that you may not even have in other parts of the country. I'd be surprised if it isn't even a bigger percentage. It, it could be. Uh, you have a lot of folks that, that don't necessarily share as much with the family. Uh, if your kids are involved in the business, they're going to have a, a, a much greater knowledge. But frankly, a lot of these folks don't have kids that are involved in the business. Right. So they really haven't talked to their children about what they have. Sometimes they haven't even really talked to their spouse about what they have. They're so busy building what becomes really their baby. Yeah. And it's and it's difficult to take time out from that to educate everybody else. The fourth kid, right? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, talk a little bit about uh, that transition. You know, where do you begin that process? Where should a, a, a business owner begin to think about it and and, and uh, steps he or she should take. So when I, when I meet with a business owner, what I start with is, have we thought about anything? And often they'll say, well, I have an estate plan. I say, well, you know, your estate plan, tell me about your estate plan. I have a will. Well, an estate plan and a business succession plan are two different things. If you think about it uh, like taking a trip. If I'm going to start in New York and end up in L.A., well, that's an estate plan. I went from A to B. Yeah. The succession plan is, where did I go in between? Did I go straight to L.A.? Did I go to New Orleans, stay there for a few days? Then I went to Dallas. So the succession plan is, how do I get from A to B? When they say, well, I haven't really talked about that, then we start diving into, well, are your kids involved in the business? Do you think they have the ability to continue in the business? Have you thought about selling the business? Is your business prepared to sell? Do you have audited financial statements? All of these things just to get the conversation jump started. Right. And is there a business beyond you? <laughs> it, it, exactly. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, that, a lot of people have their entire entity is dependent on them as a brand. That's correct. And, and it's, is, does the business live, does it have its own life outside of you? Yeah. If it doesn't have its own life outside of you, for those folks, the idea of I'm going to die and it's going to continue, it's going to disappear. It's almost a lucrative hobby. It, it is. <laughs> Assuming it's lucrative. <laughs> it, it is for some. It's not lucrative for all, but it, right. it, it tends to be paying the bills, getting them through life. Uh, for some of them say, I do want to sell. The question then becomes, well, can I sell? Yeah. What do I get? I, I know what taking 500000 or $200,000 home a year means. I don't know what $10 million means. How, right. does that, how does that equate? And we help those folks understand what does that $10 million, $5 million, $3 million mean for the rest of their lives. So with this white paper, what, what is the uh, reader going to get? Well, I think they're going to get uh, eight, eight case studies that go through the challenges that people face in deciding 
are my kids prepared to deal with this business? Can the business live on its own? Do I want to sell to a financial buyer, so a private equity firm who's really their primary goal is to make money, or a strategic buyer who may allow this business to continue on, continue to employ my key employees, my children that are involved in the business, and figuring out which is the best path for them. Uh, do they have a business that's even saleable and, and things of that nature. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, you, you need several players when you're dealing with something like this. Obviously, someone with your background and your kind of experience is helpful. Probably also need attorneys involved. You know, what are some of the players that, that you, and I guess you would start with one and you would bring in the others as needed. How, uh, how does that look typically? I, I, I like more of the, of the team approach team from approach. the very start. And it's two different teams. It's the team that works around the business. So whether it's an investment bank, whether it's a broker, uh, is it your, 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 your business accountants, your, your business uh, bankers, and then your personal CPAs, your personal bankers, your personal investment managers, all of those surrounding each group getting to the point where everything is coordinated and there is a plan in place, big whiteboard sessions where you figure out what's the best way for you to go. Patrick Pacheco has been our guest. He's with U.S. Trust. By the way, do you have a, a website? Do you want to refer to? Yes, at www.ustrust.com. You can get a copy of the white paper there. I think a business owner should look at it and will find it uh, as a good springboard to start the conversation. It's prominently displayed there. It at, is. On that website, ustrust.com. Patrick, thanks for your time. I appreciate the time. And that wraps up another program. Do you want to thank our friends at Execution, C-A-O-O-Y, and Cornerstone Business Academy. Have a great day and spend it wisely right here on this station. <laughs>